If you struggle with self-doubt, insecurity, low self-esteem, then I encourage you to watch this video today. Uh, I, I've been there, I get it, I feel it, um, but today I really want to address this topic and we're going to be uh, addressing how to f resolve this challenge of the mind. So when we were children, we were told to dream big. We can do and we can become anything we want. And we believed it. Did we believe it because we were just so young and naive? Maybe. But I think it's really because we didn't yet have any experience in life that would tell us otherwise. But as we grow older, we accumulate more experiences in life. We're shaped by our parents, um, maybe the standards that they had for us that we didn't always meet. We're shaped by our school teachers and our classmates, the discussions and the interactions we had. Uh, we're shaped as we get older by our workplace our colleagues, our managers, our bosses. Um, and we're also, at this point, maybe setting goals for ourselves. And sometimes we fall short and we don't always meet those goals. So we start to develop fears and insecurities and these things breed self-doubt. And the challenge is that we start to believe those self-doubts and those limitations and we believe that they're true. And the thing is that Humans, we have this deep desire to hold beliefs, uh, especially as we get older. I don't know about you, but I've definitely experienced it. As you get older, you start to want to have beliefs, beliefs about politics, about religion, about economics, and the list goes on. Um, you become a bit more opinionated in many ways. And the challenge is that when we have a belief, we have a tendency to identify with those beliefs. And one of the strongest human forces is the need to stay consistent with how we identify ourselves. And so what happens with these um, self-doubts is that we unknowingly have beliefs about ourselves that don't serve us and that we are actually conditioning. So when you have a belief about yourself, there is this human desire, this human need to stay consistent with that belief. And so even though you're trying to avoid that because it's causing pain in your life, you are unknowingly conditioning it to become a greater part of your life. Self-doubts are simply beliefs about yourself that you believe to be true. So you believe you're not intelligent enough, you're not capable enough, you're not um, tall enough to get the girl, you're not pretty enough to get the guy, you're not wealthy enough to start the business, you're not educated enough to get the raise, etc., etc. The list goes on. You and I both know all the things that we can come up with are in our mind. And these are not unique beliefs. You know, I hate to break it to you, but I love to in many ways because sometimes we think we're the only ones who have these insecurities and these self-doubts, but not one single one of them is unique to you alone. And that's because they originate in the mind. And we all have the mind, and so we are all vulnerable to the, the thoughts that arise in the mind. And so these doubts are not unique. Um, there's nothing special about them. And it's only those who become aware of the mind those who can become watchers of the mind that are able to move past this condition of self-doubt. I'm going to let you in on a little secret that I've discovered over the last couple years on this journey of self-inquiry. I found that almost always the answer is simply awareness, just awareness. And I get how I've, I've had this battle with my ego as well where I felt like you, you kind of want to have a more complex solution um, when you have such a complex problem or a problem that's been plaguing you for the last 15 years of your life, like self-esteem. Uh, you expect the solution to be more complex because you expect it to be something that's hard to overcome since you've been challenged with it for so many years. But the simple truth is that oftentimes awareness is the answer. And that's actually very liberating because that gives you comfort in knowing that you don't have to do something. Um, it can be as simple as just bringing awareness to what's going on in the mind. So all you need to know is the following. We live in a world of duality. So where there is up, there is down. Where there is morning, there is night. Where there is life, there is death. Happiness, there is sadness. 
And there are no exceptions to this. This happens on the microscopic level where there are protons or antiprotons. This is the reason that we know where there is self-doubt, there is also self-confidence or just confidence. And because you know you can access self-doubt, you can also access confidence. And you have to understand that you can access confidence because confidence does not originate outside of you. And that's what we are told in society with marketing campaigns. You have to look a certain way to feel confident. You have to wear a certain cologne to feel confident. You have to make a certain amount of money. That's all just bullshit to make money off of you. But confidence originates from the inside, no different than self-doubt originates from the inside. Okay? And that's very important because that means that in the same way that you gravitate and access self-doubt, you can condition yourself to access confidence. It's just a matter of conditioning. So why is it that people say, if I can do it, you can too? It's because even though most of us are moving through life rather unconsciously reacting to every thought that we have, uh, we inherently know that we come from a similar source and we have this source within us and in fact biology will tell us that we are even 99 percent biologically similar so we are way more similar than we are different and this is good news this means that if your friend is capable of driving a car you're probably also going to be capable of driving a car now there are of course true limitations if you have a physical impairment or disability that won't allow you to drive a car and there's also self limitations so maybe you have fear of driving a car because maybe you just have fears and this is preventing you from getting in the car and it's instilling a belief in you that I can't drive but those aren't true you can drive you have the physical capability to drive but it's what you have to get beyond the mind. And so if I say, for example, that uh, I'm 5'2 and I want to become the next LeBron James, uh, is that likely to happen? No, it's not likely to happen because there is a true limitation there. Basketball players are really tall and I'm 5'2. Is it possible? It's still possible. Who am I to say what's possible and what isn't possible? Who are you to define what's possible and isn't possible? The thing about defining what's possible is now you create a belief about what is and isn't possible and you confine yourself, you limit yourself within that belief. And I'll give you an example of this that's really powerful. In 1954, Roger Bannister was the first man to run one mile in four minutes. Before he achieved that goal, Nobody else was able to do it. And in fact, everyone said it was impossible. They said only under the perfect conditions would someone, would a human be able to run a mile in four minutes. And Roger Bannister not only um, shattered that belief, but he also ran the mile in very unforgiving conditions. And what happened was 46 days after he achieved that breakthrough, the second man was able to run a mile in four minutes, 46 days after. And since then, hundreds of people have been able to achieve that. So this tells us a few things, right? This tells us first that science is always breaking new barriers, uh, learning new things, discovering new things. Uh, it's not fixed. Uh, and so the limitations that we believe are true aren't always true uh, and we have to keep an open mind with that and this tells us also that the power of belief so because people believed that it was impossible to run the four minute mile nobody was able to do it but after roger bannister succeeded in running a mile in four minutes hundreds of people were able to as well because now they have a reference they saw that hey if this dude can do it i can do it too and so then they have the belief. But the powerful thing, the reason why Roger Bannister was able to, to do that for other people, to be a source of inspiration for other people so that they can achieve those things too, wasn't because he had someone before him who proved that they could do it, was because he believed it before it came true. You don't have to see it to believe it. You 
don't see oxygen, but you believe and you know that you're breathing oxygen in all the time. You don't see the wind, but you feel it on your skin. And so Roger Bannister, he used his mind in a way that can serve him. He believed it in his mind, and because he believed it, he worked really hard at achieving it, and it's with that belief that he was able to make that possible. If he didn't believe it was possible, how hard do you think he would actually try? Probably not very hard because it feels like it's a waste of time. If something's not possible, why even attempt? Right? So that's the problem with having these um, limitations on what is and isn't possible. We don't know. So even with basketball, yes, you can be 5'2", and you can become maybe the next LeBron James. Who knows? There's a guy named Spud Webb who was 5'7", and he won the slam dunk contest. So you don't have to be the tallest player to be a very successful player. It's important to understand that it's never a matter of capability. Can you do it? Yes, you can do it. Um, for the most part, there's no reason that you wouldn't be capable of achieving something. It's not a question of whether you can or cannot. It's a question of whether you are willing to. And you have to be brutally honest with yourself to be able to distinguish the difference between both of them. Because sometimes these self-limitations, we believe that it's actually impossible for me to do this, um, it's impossible for me to change, but really that's not the truth. Um, you're full of potential, you're capable, just like anyone else who's been able to achieve that. So the first step in becoming aware is asking yourself, is this true? Is this a true limitation or a limitation of the mind? And you have to be very honest and very humble in order to answer this question. So let me give you an example that we can maybe all relate to at some point in life. Um, I will never make it. I will never become successful. This is something that really hurts a lot of people and prevents them from achieving their goals in life. And so you ask yourself, is this true? Well, no, it's not true because I don't hold a crystal ball that's gonna allow me to see the future. I don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow, let alone five or 10 years from now. So of course it can't be true. Second question you ask yourself, what is the truth? And now you have to really think about it. The truth is that if I'm really honest with myself and if I look for them, I know that there are people all over the world some of them are famous that I can use as references, who have been in my circumstance or far worse and have been able to become successful. In fact, they use their circumstances to motivate them to create success instead of using their circumstances to create self-doubt. And so, yes, it's possible because someone else was able to do it too. And that gives me a lot of peace, knowing that I can achieve it. Because sometimes we want to be unique in our circumstances. We want to say, no, no, I can't do it because I've got this limitation and that limitation and so you know it's impossible for me. Well, yes, you can take on that belief. Those things may be true, but is that going to serve you? If you really want to create the success in your life, you're going to take on the belief that will serve you, not hold you back. And so if you look for those references in your life, you'll find them. They're all over the place. You just have to look for them. You can say, the truth is that I have been successful in the past. I have set some small goals in the past that I've achieved. And if I apply the same energy and focus that I did on those goals to this, I can achieve it too. And even if you haven't actually set any goals in your life, just think back at times when you were younger, when you learned to tie your shoes, when you learned to swim, to ride a bike, maybe to cook an egg. Those are all achievements. Those are all goals that maybe you didn't consciously set for yourself, but they were things that you didn't know how to do that you learned how to do. And so it's no different when it comes to this. You're capable of achieving those goals. The truth is that I haven't tried everything. Sometimes we tell ourselves this, right? I've tried everything to become successful and I can't. You know, but that's not true. There's still plenty of things that you can do and there are plenty of opportunities out there and if I don't find them, I create them. And so that's really going to empower you to, to see that, yeah, there are a lot of things out there that I haven't tried. 
Because if you think that you've done everything, that puts you in the situation where you're now helpless. And you never want to be in a helpless state. Because then you're going to become apathetic, and you're not going to try, and you're not going to get anywhere. And so you have to be honest with yourself. There's always something that you can do. There's always something that you can try. I hear people all the time telling me, Tatiana, I've tried everything when it comes to marketing. Do you know how much there is to do in the marketing field that you can attempt to, to market your products, your services? There's so much. So there's always something more that you can do. So yes, you can create success. You just have to change your approach. You can say that the truth is that nobody is born successful. We all have to develop skills and that there isn't anything I can't learn how to do, especially with the internet. I mean, gosh, we can learn how to do almost everything on YouTube these days. The truth is that I'm really good at XYZ, and if I get creative enough, I can find a way of making good money doing what I'm passionate about. So there's a lot of truths that you can dissect, that you can summon uh, if you are searching for them. So you can be stuck in your limitations and your self-doubt, or you can come up with more empowering truths that are going to serve you and allow you to move forward with your life. Now step three, and this is totally optional if you wanna make this into a process, you can replace those limiting beliefs or those self-doubts with empowering ones, things that are gonna serve you. And just realize that like at the end of the day you can you know try and figure out well, what really is the truth and at the end of the day who knows what the truth is you can really go down a rabbit hole with that one um, but just realize that the whole point of this process is to allow you to um, achieve what you want and, and what you want to achieve is to move beyond self-doubt to become confident instead of insecure and so take on the truths that are going to serve you you believe that the self-doubt, the insecurities, all those things that you told yourself were true, they weren't. So take on some new truths that will serve you. I said earlier that the answer is not complex, it's simply awareness, but what I've just laid out for you is kind of like a practical process that I think can be beneficial for you when you're first uh, welcoming awareness and getting acquainted with awareness. But with time, what will happen is it will be such a smooth and easy thing. You don't even need to think twice about it. All you do is you just watch your thoughts. You just watch your thoughts. You don't identify with them. You don't judge them. You don't um, label them. You just watch them. Kind of like the clouds in the sky. The clouds, they come and they go, right? And what happens is with us, when we have thoughts, we want to grab onto a thought and we identify with it and then we hold on to it and then we go all over with it and it, it wreaks havoc. But if you don't let, hold on to it, if you just let it go and you just watch it, then the clouds will pass, okay? And thoughts are the same. I mean, you're never gonna turn off your thoughts, but they can just pass. And that way we won't be emotionally invested in them. And then what you can do if you wanna say something, you can say, Thank you for sharing. You have a thought, you have a self-doubt, you can say, thank you for sharing, without identifying with that, without making it the truth. Thank you for sharing. And so it becomes a very liberating experience where yes, maybe you still have self-doubts, I don't know if you will ever be free from that because again, we all have the mind. Very few people will be able to um, release themselves from the grasp of the ego, which is the mind. Uh, it requires commitment. I mean, if you want to become a monk, feel free. Uh, but what you can do is you can become the watcher of the mind. And the mind hates that because the mind hates to be known. Because when it's known, it has less control over you. Because when, when you don't realize that what the mind is doing, it has total control over your life total grasp on you. But when you can disassociate from it and go meta and see it from that perspective, you now have control over it, or at least a bit more control. So the answer is just bringing awareness, realizing that the things that you believe to be true aren't always true, um, and not attaching with it, not associating with it. 
And if you want to take on some new empowering beliefs that are going to help condition this confidence within you, feel free to do that. Because remember, confidence isn't something outside of you. It's within you. It's just like everything else, every other state that you have. There are states where you feel lazy and tired and low. And there's times where you feel energized and enthusiastic and motivated. All of it's within you. Same with emotions. All of it's within you. We, we, we think that we're going to feel a certain way by the external world. If I buy the fancy car, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel proud. If I um, get the man of my dreams, I'm going to feel um, secure. If I uh, you know, look a certain way, I'm going to feel happy. Like None of that's true. It's all the bullshit we tell ourselves because the truth is the emotions originate within. The emotions don't come from the outside. We just give ourselves permission to feel those things once in a while when we achieve these goals that we set. So when you become aware of that, you don't, you're no longer deluded by that. And you don't have to spend the rest of your life trying to seek all these things, these material things, um, that are really going to lead to unsat unsatisfactory ends. Because they, you, when you do get them, you realize that, oh, well, yeah, it didn't really do what I thought it would do. Um, so hopefully this video helps you guys. And if it does, leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear what resonated with you. And if you have any tips for the viewers on how to, um, how to overcome self-doubt, then please share that. It's great to have a community of people who want to help and serve each other. And also, I'll recommend if you want to get more into mindset, you want to learn more about your mind and what's going on. My husband, Stefan, from Project Life Mastery, he is one of the best on mindset. I always go to him. I watch his videos for inspiration because he really gets to the core. And so I would recommend his channel for you, and I'll link it down below for you. All right, thank you guys for watching and have a fantastic day.